I need to make some changes for 2023. But first, I want to say a heartfelt thank you to everyone who's watched videos this year, left a comment, subscribed, just offered support throughout this year and pretty much the entire time that I've been doing YouTube. It has been a phenomenal experience, something I never expected to do when I was younger. And it's allowed for some amazing experiences, opportunities, people I've met, cars I've driven, events I've attended. It's honestly just so amazing. It's allowed me to own some epic cars, drive and experience some epic cars, and it's been quite an awesome journey. I'm looking forward to the future. Before we get into those changes that I want to make for next year, and we'll talk through those, I want to look back at some of the highlights of 2022. I mean, the year is winding down. It has been a pretty awesome year. Exhausting, long, stressful, but overall phenomenal. Like, let's go through the list of highlights. One of the first ones, my first time getting to go to Indy 500. Chevy invited me out to Indy 500 at Indianapolis 500, an iconic race. First time ever going to an Indy car race, and we did it the right way. We got access to the pit car garage, a ride along in the Z06 pace car. We got the full suite experience, police escort to the track, and the sights and sounds of Indy cars running at 200 plus miles an hour was something that was pretty phenomenal. I also had a lot of international trips this year, which is a result of my full-time job uh, at HP Tuners. Went to the Middle East twice. Dubai is a ridiculous place. The cars there are just absolutely insane. Went to some of the dealerships that had just ridiculous inventory. So the Middle East was a lot of fun, very different culture. Went to the UK a couple times, Europe. And the UK, one of the fun highlights was getting to visit the Schmuseum, Schmi 150's garage and collection. Tim is a awesome guy, amazing collection of cars. And it was really cool getting to see them all in person and then driving on the wrong side of the road. That took a little bit of getting used to. When I, I landed at Heathrow, got into the rental car, I definitely missed like four exits. I just kept doing loops around Heathrow. Um, Monterey Car Week is always a highlight and this year was exemplary it was ridiculous again uh, we got to check out the Gunther Works Project Tornado up close which is an amazing car the quail was an amazing event too with the Koenigsegg CC850 there were Wyra R's there there were just so many amazing cars there caught up with a bunch of friends it's one of the best parts of Monterey Car Week why I love going as every year, as long as I can, I want to go every single year because that's where I get to see and catch up with so many people that I met through the car community. And then another highlight, there was this little two week stretch in the fall where it was almost surreal the kind of cars I was getting access to. First, I got to play around with a Pagani Zonda R dream car. I mean, track monster carbon fiber. That was special thanks to Team Stradale and Mouse Motors. And then subsequently, I got to drive first an SF90, but then my friends McLaren P1, dream car, poster car, amazing review. I love how that one turned out. And then it got even more crazy because the next week, Koenigsegg Regera, which is just a next level hypercar mega car. Getting to spend a lot of time with the Koenigsegg is not something I really expected to do this year. And that is absolutely one of the highlights. But the biggest, absolute biggest highlight this year, the Corvette Z06. From getting to go on the media drive, so that was over in Pittsburgh. We're on Pittsburgh Raceway, around the, the, the back roads in the Pittsburgh area. The Corvette Z06 is a car that excited me so much that after about a year ago getting a ride along in the passenger seat of two cars, I was like, I need to buy one. I need one of these in my life. And finally getting to drive one uh, this fall and then getting to order mine, take delivery of it. The actual delivery experience happened a little over two and a half weeks ago. And I'm extra excited for some updates on the Z06. We'll get to those in a bit. So some of the changes I want to make for 2023, I'll talk about why. I've been doing YouTube for a while, actually, when I really think back to it. I started it in freshman year of college, which was 2013, back on the other channel. So that's been a, almost a decade at this point. So that's a lot of YouTubing. I've loved the experience. It's been a ton of fun. And it's a bit of a blessing and a curse because I love the whole range of cars. I enjoy experiencing more mainstream consumer vehicles, the latest plug-in hybrids, some family crossovers, SUVs, regular cars, but also obviously the higher end performance cars, enthusiast cars, exotics, things like the Escalade V, the Bronco Raptor, Koenigsegg, Ferrari Pista, stuff like that. So I've decided I need to make a bit of a strategy change because things may not be going exactly the way I want them to. I notice a lot of times people comment, oh, why don't you have more followers? Why aren't you getting more views? And it is a conundrum. Uh, myself and Elia, uh, Extalgic, we've 
We've pondered it a bit. I've thought about it. I've wondered it. I've looked at the data. I talked to some other friends who are YouTubers too. And the only conclusion I've so far come to is because I don't do the same consistent thing all the time. Because one week I might be driving a Kia Sorento plug-in hybrid, and then next week it's a Ferrari Pista. And then the following week it might be a Chevy Bolt, and then it's gonna be a Koenigsegg. So it's like all over the place, right? There's no consistent thread. Whereas some other uh, big YouTubers, they are focusing on whether it's just pure vlog content, lifestyle automotive stuff, or they're just doing the exotic car vlogs, or they're reviewing stuff purely. There's no vlog or ownership stuff in addition. They're just reviewing every car that comes out. Kind of a more consistent theme. So for 2023, I, I'm gonna try this out. I've already been doing it for the last couple of weeks where we're gonna focus my main EDX channel on enthusiast vehicles, performance vehicles. So anything that an enthusiast uh, would like. So every, I mean, the recent couple of videos, Escalade V, going back the, the SF90, P1, Z06, Koenigsegg, stuff like that. So it's gonna be more of the performance oriented stuff, anything that an enthusiast would be really interested in, still focusing on reviews, cause I, I just love making reviews. I love evaluating a car, experiencing it, comparing it to other cars, talking about everything from exterior design to interior, the technology, how it feels as a spend all of it together, think about the value, competitors. I truly do enjoy doing the reviews, and I hope you guys have noticed the elevation of quality recently too, with Elia Stalgic on board, working alongside, I mean, that man is a talented video editor. He is a hundred times better than I ever could be at editing. So these videos that he's churning out are absolutely gorgeous, and I really wanna keep elevating the quality of these videos. So we're gonna focus the content on performance and enthusiast stuff, still do reviews, still do ownership perspective. So that's something I think that set my channel, uh, it's kind of a unique thing that I have done where it's asking owners what it's like to own the car. So even with a press car, I get it for a full week. Yeah, I get to see what it's like to live with, but to truly understand a car, you have to talk to the owner because they spent their money on it, they bought it, they have reasons for it, they live with it day to day, they understand all the nuances. So I wanna keep doing that type of content, especially when it's with a, a car owned by a friend or a subscriber or something like that. And obviously ownership perspective of my own cars. I love sharing that. Part of the reason why I have them is, I mean, I'm passionate about them, I love them, they're like my children. But sharing what it's like to own an RA, the 350R, and make tremendously, um, sort of irresponsible decisions to have three rear wheel drive sports cars while living in the Midwest. Yeah, that's what I have right now. So we're gonna do that, still make really high quality reviews, ownership stuff, and here's, here's something else. I want to make sure every piece of content I push out, I'm truly proud of. It is the absolute best. Sometimes with the YouTube game, social media in general, it's almost a quantity versus quality game. Just the more you churn out, some stuff will do really well, and you, it's a numbers game at times. Right? Every single piece of content, I want it to just be the top tier, the best that I know I can possibly put out. So that's a goal there too, even if it means less posting, if it's only one video per week for a month, extrapolated out over the course of the year, so of just pushing for as much content as possible. I honestly, for a long time, I've tried this thing where if I have a car, I'll do two kind of separate videos of it. One could be the driving for review, one would be a stationary walk around. And it almost doubles the chances of success potential success, right? Because of the review maybe doesn't pick up, the thumbnail isn't as good, or it's not as catchy, or the time it's posted, or whatever, but then the other video may skyrocket and do really well, kind of the same way I do a review of myself with a car, and then I do the ownership one where I interview the person. It's almost, it, it varies depending which one will do really well. Uh, I still may do that for certain things. We're gonna tailor it. This is not like set in stone, we're gonna change it and just only follow this formula. It's obviously still gonna be fluid depending on how opportunities come up. The vlogging side of things, I'm, I, I have a mixed, I have mixed feelings towards vlogging. I don't think I'm the best vlogger in the world. I enjoy it, especially when I'm having fun. That's something Elliot told me. It's like, when you're having fun, it's just better. He can tell when he's editing it, when we're watching it afterwards. It definitely is easier that way too, but I can't compete with like the guys like Stradman or Shmi vlogging. Those guys are pros. And having known them uh, in person as friends for years and been around them as they're filming, watching those guys vlog is next level. So I still want to do those because I have opportunities, whether it's going to cool events, um, Monterey Car Week, or auto shows, or media launches. I sometimes get invited to these media drives and get to drive cars early on. So I still want to include some of that content, even if it may not be like purely, truly enthusiast. Like I have one coming up in February, which it's a cool vehicle and it's pretty mainstream, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't qualify as the true enthusiast one. The enthusiast trim of this specific vehicle is gonna happen later in the year, but I still wanna go do that. So new car content in terms of press launches, auto shows, I still think I need to do. 
When we first started thinking about this and talking about it, when I say we, it's myself and Elliot, we were kind of brainstorming along with some other friends. I was thinking, well, okay, Eddie X will be all the enthusiast performance stuff, the high horsepower, it's just exotics and stuff like that. And then I would create a second channel because I still want to do content with the more mainstream stuff, uh, consumer vehicles and offer advice. I get people asking me, should I buy this crossover or this crossover? And like, there's still vehicles and they're still really cool to evaluate and try differences. Um, so I was thinking about a second channel for that. And then I looked at kind of my time and how much energy I have and how much time it takes and all of that. So I'm like, hmm, so I'm not sure about that. Comment below, what do you guys think? Like still seeing that type of content? Do you want to see me go drive and review a Kia Carnival minivan? Why do I keep using Kia as the example? I know they sponsored a couple of videos this year, but uh, stuff like that. So that, that's a current debate. Uh, current, I'll know for sure, I'm gonna to try to focus the main channel on enthusiast stuff. Following up on all of that is just more general overarching stuff, uh, some thoughts. Being more transparent, sharing even more of what I do for work, what life is like. Um, social media is a highlight reel. A lot of you guys follow me on Instagram, you see the YouTube stuff, Facebook. It is a very carefully curated highlight reel. It's not always reflective of what real life is because if you're gonna post it on there, it better be something pretty exciting and cool because you wanna show it to the world. Uh, so I've been thinking about sharing some of these things. I get people messaging me and asking me like, what did I do with my career? Or, like, what do I do to afford the cars? Or friends asking things like that too. Because I, when I think about it, I have a, had a pretty unique career path. Started off as a mechanical engineer, graduated early, went to work at a uh, automotive company, Ford, as a vehicle engineer, got bored. Now, now like I do marketing things, right? And it's completely unrelated to my engineering background. Still in the automotive space. And then some of the opportunities I get, I'm thinking about maybe sharing more of that. Uh, I did not come from money. My family is not crazy wealthy. My parents immigrated from China here without much. I recently found out that at one point, this is actually, I think when I was just when I was born, my parents had a Chevrolet Geo Met Metra, the Geo, the tiny, terrible little car. I was like, oh man, dad, that must have been horrible. Uh, I'm not the smartest person in the world, not the funniest, I don't have the craziest connections, the wealthiest, but I know I could work the hardest to try to do these things. That's kind of how I approach all this stuff. So thinking about sharing more of that type of insight. So comment below, would you like to hear about that type of stuff? I did a, what do I do for a living video a while ago, might've been this year or the winter, and kind of showed that, because people do ask, and sometimes I'll look back and think, what do I do for a living, and how have I gotten here? And it's pretty crazy. So thinking about doing some more of that type of stuff, um, Ultimately, everything I do in my life is cars. Between YouTube, my full-time job, pat, like hobby, which is YouTube really, um, friends are pretty much all car friends and stuff like that. So it all revolves around cars. I've met some amazing people from this, uh, amazing opportunities, and I don't have any intention of stopping because it's just the best. It's absolutely the best. I do have some Z06 updates. So tomorrow, no, whenever this video is posted, actually maybe today, Friday, we'll be flying to California, to LA, to visit my friend Griffin, but also we're shipping the Corvette out to California. It's been almost three weeks since I've seen the car. I took delivery down at the museum, and then it pretty much immediately went into a truck and got shipped to Michigan for full body PPF. The guys at New Layer Customs did a phenomenal job. Full body Expel Ultimate, no, Expel uh, Fusion. It's actually a new film that Expel has. I need to get more details from them, but it's got like ceramic coating built into it, which sounds really cool, but the full car got protected and the guys at new layer customs did they're the best like you can't even tell the car has ppf on it i'll post some pictures up here of the corners the edges like you, that's so good so i did the full body ppf on the car and it's currently as we speak in a truck being shipped out to california we'll fly out there get to spend some time with the car i have a bunch of videos planned so obviously the delivery video is already live i do want to do a video talking about how much did i pay for the car i think that'll be of interest walking through all the options the costs um some of the upfront costs like how much ppf was and i've spent way too much shipping the car all over the place. Some of the things associated around that numbers always seem to intrigue people. And I'll be fully transparent, be like, this is how much I paid. I'll show all of that type of stuff. Uh, initial impressions, obviously. We gotta get through break-in, but initial impressions of my car. Having driven it on track, on the street, kind of know what it's like, but my own car is just more special. It's a little different. I got to configure it exactly how I want it. So we'll do initial impressions video, uh, really detailed overview of the spec too. I think I'll walking through why I optioned what I did, why I didn't option what I did, showing you all the potential things you can do on a C8 Z06, how it compares to Stingray. We'll do some cinematic stuff for sure. We've got a couple things coming from it, coming for the car that will be exciting. And I'm excited for that. A lot of photo shoots too. So 
that's a, a quick overview of some of my thoughts for this year wrapping up, going into 2023, been reflecting on a lot of things, setting goals for next year. This is, I mean, what I get to do for work, for work is unbelievable. Between my full-time job and YouTube, the opportunities, it, it's ridiculous and it's possible because of the support of everybody who watches the videos, all of my friends, all the people in my life who allow me to drive their cars, who invite me to all sorts of amazing opportunities. So thank you to everybody for that. I'm gonna keep doing it. Um, oh, uh, posting schedule, that's a big one for the channel. I'm thinking about doing a more consistent posting schedule aiming for Mondays and Fridays. That's my current thought. Typically post in the early afternoon, Eastern Central Time, like call it two o'clock Central. I'm here in Chicago, so we're in the Central Time. Mondays and Fridays, and if I can keep it more consistent, A, it's kind of a discipline for me to be like, hey, Eddie, you got to schedule a video Mondays tomorrow, uh, but also allows you guys, the audience, to more consistently expect what's coming. So maybe something like Monday, every Monday it's a review, and every Friday it could be either ownership video or a vlog or something more informal in that vein. But every Monday I'll try to get a cinematic, like high quality review up coming we've got bronco raptor that video is going to be awesome uh, i'm going to continue working with elia extalgic he is tremendously talented it's been great getting to know him and work together the guy turns around videos faster than i can even watch them <laughs> it's awesome and uh that's that's pretty much wrapping up the thoughts so sharing more things keeping at it focusing the channel more on enthusiast performance stuff and then we are off to California for New Year's and spending some time at the Z06, then off to Scottsdale and drive the car all the way out to Scottsdale. I was living in Arizona for the winter. With that, I appreciate all of the support this year. Really looking forward to next year. Thanks for watching.